G'day everyone, welcome back to the Moto Barista channel. Today we're breaking down the differences between cruiser motorcycles and adventure bikes and hopefully find out which one is the right choice for you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and let's get into today's video. Alrighty, so if you've watched this channel over the last couple of years, you know that I used to own a Harley Davidson Spork Light. That bike was very special to me. I really, really enjoyed owning that motorcycle. I also first rode a motorcycle when I was six years old on a KTM dirt bike. No surprises now, I have another KTM in my garage. So as somebody who loves to ride motorcycles as a way to escape the city, to explore new areas, to camp, to live in the outdoors, it's no surprise that the Cruiser and the Adventure bike are bikes that are really close to my heart and I love both. And if I could still have one of each in my garage, I definitely, definitely would. The fact that I have one instead of the other is no sign as to where this conversation is gonna be going. In fact, I think that these bikes are closer in their comparison than we actually think. Maybe we should break down why someone might buy a cruiser or adventure bike in the first place. Like me, it's probably somebody who wants a bike that is a vehicle for their freedom. Maybe it's gonna be used for commuting during the week, but on the weekend, it's about getting out of the city. It's about picking a spot on the map and just riding. Perhaps spending a night, two nights, three nights, a week. Maybe it's just a day trip, but it's about breaking up that monotony of the day-to-day -day life and replacing it with something amazing. Replacing it with that true feeling of freedom. So there are a couple of ways that we can think about the differences between these bikes. And the obvious one, of course, is the kind of terrain that you might be traveling on. Now, if you're gonna be traveling any sort of off-road terrain, gravel tracks, fire roads, sand, anything that isn't just pavement, then an adventure bike is already somewhere that you're probably gonna be leaning, and it's gonna be a bike that is more suitable for the kind of terrain that you wanna tackle. That being said, I've tackled many gravel roads on my Harley Davidson in the past and had no issues whatsoever. If predominantly you're gonna be riding roads, these two bikes are really still in the fight against each other. Another really big factor to consider is the style. One of the reasons we buy a motorcycle is because we love the look of it. We want to see how beautiful it is in our garage or when we park it on the street and we have to walk away to our job and we have a little glance back to our baby. If it's a bike that doesn't make you turn around, it's probably a bike you shouldn't own. Adventure bikes are pretty well known for being the most ugly motorcycles in the industry. It's all about function over form. However, on the other side of the coin, we have cruisers which quite opposite are form over function. Something to consider is the actual engine itself. The engines found in your typical air-cooled cruiser and your highly advanced liquid-cooled adventure bikes are very, very different. They deliver a very different experience when riding them. When you have a big displacement air-cooled engine rumbling beneath you, as in a Harley Davidson or an Indian or the BMW R18, you really feel like you're engaging with a machine. And something that is often neglected is the torque that these engines produce. Now, horsepower is something as an industry we always like to focus on. Who has the most horsepower numbers? But let me be honest, whether you ride a cruiser or an adventure bike, I can almost guarantee that you are never gonna utilize the max horsepower from that bike's engine. And if you do, you are one in a few. Let me tell you that. In fact, it's where that torque comes into play that really provides the fun riding experience. Harley Davidson engines produce a lot of torque. I mean, a crap load. And that sensation is felt straight from when you pull off the line. It has this amazing feel almost like being pulled back by a roller coaster. With an adventure bike, you're gonna find that the power is a little bit more linear. You're not gonna have that massive surge of torque down low like the Harley, and you're not gonna have crazy amounts of horsepower up high like a sports bike, though there's gonna be a lot more compared to your Harley. Instead, what you'll find with these bikes is a really usable RPM range with power across the entirety of it. Whether you're in low, medium, or high RPMs, there's always gonna be some power on tack you're gonna have a really smooth riding experience. Big difference, of course, is gonna also be in your electronics package. There is no doubt that the adventure bikes come with all the bells and whistles when it comes to electronics. They're kind of the industry sandbox when it comes to new technology. 
everything that's cutting edge is going onto those adventure bikes. Cruisers, on the other hand, like to keep things a little bit more old school, meaning none of the fuss, please. This could be something that you really like. It takes away all distractions when riding. However, you might be somebody who wants all of the extra technology that comes with the adventure bike, the added safety features of incredible, sophisticated traction control and better brakes. Again, these are all things that are personal that we have to make on our riding style and preferences. Now I could keep going on with a list of these comparisons, but finally I'll break it down into one really big factor, and that's the seat height. If you're somebody who's intimidated by a large motorcycle and you feel extremely uncomfortable only having maybe one foot or one foot on tippy toes on the floor while stationary on a bike, then an adventure bike might not be for you. The center of gravity is a lot higher compared to a Harley Davidson or another cruiser bike where the gravity is very low and the seat height's very low too. It's very easy for even short riders to be able to touch the floor with both feet on a cruiser motorcycle. So if you're a beginner, if you're shorter, or you're intimidated by big bikes, then a cruiser, despite its heavy weight, actually could be quite easy and comfortable for you to ride and to control. So despite the big differences in the adventure bike and the cruiser, the experience of adventure, freedom, and exploring the open road is something that you're gonna enjoy on anything with two wheels. Hopefully this video could help break down the advantages and disadvantages of both the adventure bike and the cruiser motorcycle and hopefully set you on a path to find the perfect bike for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and anybody who wants to help out fellow riders find the perfect bike, leave your recommendations and your inputs in the comments. As always, keep two wheels on the ground, practice good riding technique and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.